embark on a journey to rediscover the power of MS-DOS with 4DOS, an advanced command line interpreter that takes your system to new heights. In this comprehensive video, we delve into the world of 4DOS, exploring its capabilities, features, and how it revolutionizes your MS-DOS experience. I already have the installation files in the directory, so we will start by typing in 4DOS. This is the welcome screen for the 4DOS installer. I'm going to say yes to proceed with the installation. Uh, we don't have enough available system resources for it to run, so we'll go ahead and press a key, see if it can load into its alternate environment. Uh, no, I am not using an older version of 4DOS. According to our best practices, we should have made a copy of our config.sys and autoexec.bat files. I do highly recommend you choose the second option to take a copy of the current file in the 4DOS directory. That way you can see all the changes that it's going to make before they're committed to your main config.sys file. All right, our config.sys file has been updated. Same question for autoexec.bat. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, make the changes for me. And autoexec.bat has been updated. All right, our 4DOS installation is complete. Next time we reboot, we'll see our new command interpreter. I'm going to say yes, let's go through the options real quick. 4DOS does have some functions in it that replace other DOS programs that we were using, like DOS key. For right now, I just want to play with the colors for our command prompt because it's something that's fun to do. All right, so here we are in the directories section. We can type in the colors we want to display for various items. So just as a quick demonstration, we can type in DIRS for directories, followed by a colon, and then the color that we would like to have it displayed, which I will pick bright blue. There are the three color abbreviations for the available colors, followed by a semicolon. And then I'm going to say that I want com executables bat files, uh, btms, those are batch files for uh, 4 dots, and sys files to all display as, let's go with bright green, Colon and bright green. All right, so here is a list of all the colors we have available, black, blue, green, cyan, red, magenta, yellow, white, and the bright versions of all of those colors. All right, so we'll go ahead and exit and save uh, four dots. All right, we will restart and be right back when the computer comes back up. We are back after the restart. Now we have some color in our DOS environment. Under four DOS, we now have what is essentially a single line word processor. Let's take a look at a command like this. We can move the cursor left and right through the line one character at a time using the arrow keys as we could in DOS key. Additionally, we can now move through the text one word at a time by holding control and pressing left or right. We can also skip to the beginning of the line by pressing home or the end of the line by pressing end. Not only can we move through the text faster, but we can also delete the text faster. Holding Control and pressing L will delete the word left of the cursor. Alternatively, holding Control and pressing R will delete the word to the right of the cursor. You can also press Control Home to delete everything from the beginning of the line to the cursor, or press Control End to delete everything from the cursor to the end of the line. In the event you want to delete everything on the line, just press escape. Another key feature of the command line is the command history. 4DOS will save every command executed in the history list, similar to DOS key. You can scroll through the history by pressing the up and down arrow keys on the keyboard. New with 4DOS is the command completion to jump to a specific command in the history list. If you type the first few characters of the command and then press the up arrow. Say we want to jump to the dir command in the history list. We can type di and then press the up arrow. If there is more than one command that meets the search criteria, you can press the up arrow again to scroll through the results. The history list can only store so many commands. 
DOS key has a hard limit of 10 commands. After you reach that limit, the oldest command on the list is replaced by the newest command. With 4DOS, the limit depends on the size allowed in the options. There are also options for how the history list will handle duplicate commands, and the minimum length a command has to be before it will be stored in the history list. There are a few keystrokes for the history list. We can tell 4DOS to skip adding a command to the history list by using the at symbol before the command. The at sign before the command tells 4DOS not to put the command in the history list. Next, we can autocomplete part of the previous command by pressing F3. For example, say we're looking for a specific file. Now we want to delete file2.txt. We can type in del, followed by the F3 key. That autocompletes the rest of the line for us. In this case, the rest of the line is the file name we just searched for. Another keystroke we have is for deleting an entry in the history list. Scroll through the history list with the up and down arrows. When you reach an entry that you want to delete, press Ctrl D. Now in my case, when I did CD backslash, that's no longer in the history list. We also have an interesting option of typing a command at the command prompt and pressing Ctrl K to add the line to the history list without executing the command. With DOS key, you can show all the entries in the history list, but that list was printed on the screen, similar to a directory listing. With 4DOS, we can press the page up key, and a pop-up window will appear in the upper right corner of the screen, like this. Here we have the same options to scroll through the entries with the up and down arrows, and we can delete them by pressing Ctrl D. To access the options, we type in option at the prompt. We will start here with the startup options, and for our first option here, resident in UMB. As long as we have DOS equals UMB or DOS equals high UMB in the config.sys file, we can set this option to yes. That is going to load four DOS into an upper memory block. There are additional options for selecting the region of upper memory. You can select between regions 1 through 8. For now, I will select yes for automatic handling. The stack size option will leave alone for now. I covered stacks in a previous episode. There'll be a card linking to that video. At this time, we don't need to increase the stack size, but if we encounter stack overflow errors in the future, we'll revisit the setting. The swapping variables will leave alone for now. Similar to the swap file in later versions of Windows, we can direct 4DOS to use space in extended memory, expanded memory, a RAM drive, or a path on the hard drive. For now, I'll leave it blank for automatic handling. The buffers section here is used to set the amount of memory allocated for the functions listed. The default parameters will be more than plenty for our purposes. We can also direct them to load into upper memory. Then we have our for start and for exit options. These are interesting to me. 4DOS can execute its own version of the autoexec.bat file. This parameter is just to define the path to a batch file. Currently I'm not using one, but in the future we may, especially with for exit. When we exit 4DOS, it'll run batch files to terminate memory resident programs, for example. Last on the startup settings, we have the autoexec.bat file path and an additional field for parameters. We could add variables to autoexec.bat like percent one and percent two, then pass parameters to those variables using this setting. Next up, we have display settings. We will leave ANSI to auto. If we want to use a non-standard ANSI driver, we would need to select the yes option as 4DOS may not properly detect the driver. Next, we have our text dimensions. These are for the number of lines and columns that will be displayed on the screen. I'll leave this at its default for now. Last in this applet, we can change the background and foreground color for the text input and output. I think I want to change the output foreground to a bright yellow. That way any output from a command will stand out at the prompt. 
now we have some command options to go through. The editing section is where we can define the behavior for editing text. My preference is to insert, opposed to overtyping, so we will set that now. Then we have the file name completion options. We can have hidden file names auto-completed. We can filter the file types to autocomplete with specific commands. For example, if we only want to autocomplete text bat and sys files with the edit command, we can type in edit colon txt bat sys. Next, we have the command history settings, starting with the minimum saved characters. I'm going to leave this set to zero, which will save everything. However, we could set it to something like four, and that will not save any three letter commands, like if we typed in dir to change directories or d colon to change drives. Then we have the copy to end and move to end options. If we recall a command from history, having these options selected will either copy or move the command to the end of the history list. Otherwise, the command will retain its original position on the list and could be overwritten if we use too many commands. The wrap option applies to scrolling through the history list. If wrap is selected, the list will be circular. If deselected, you could not scroll from the first entry to the last entry. For the duplicates setting, auth means duplicate commands will be saved to history. First, we'll save the first entry when a duplicate is encountered. Last, we'll save the last entry when a duplicate is encountered. Last but not least for the command line options is the extended directory search. I won't go into too much detail here because this setting deserves an episode of its own. Selecting zero is the same way DOS handles changing directories, manually navigating through the directory tree. The remaining options depend on a directory tree database. One will take you to the directory or subdirectory that is an exact match for the directory name you searched. Two results in a directory that begins with the search term, and three results in a directory that contains the search term. Let's move on to the Windows options. We will sometimes get pop-up windows in 4DOS is in the case of a, an extended directory search that has more than one result. We would get a pop-up with the options to select from. With these settings, we can change the background and foreground colors of the pop-ups and its position on the screen. I will leave this at its default for now. Then we have the mouse option. This tells 4DOS if a mouse is available to a pop-up window. I'll leave this on automatic. Now let's go to the option set one. From the top, we have descriptions. Turning this off will tell 4DOS not to update the description file when using commands like copy, delete, move, or rename. I'll leave this enabled. Maximum length controls the length of descriptions. This impacts the describe command, which is used to create, modify, or delete file and subdirectory descriptions. The special characters we should pay attention to. The separator is the character used when entering multiple commands at the command line. This replaces the angle brackets and pipe symbols that we used previously. The escape character can also be user defined and replaces the default escaped character used by DOS. This is used for ANSI commands and printer functions. The parameter character is used for batch file parameters, like setting a variable to 3% and sign means to execute the third parameter and all parameters after that. Next, we have the decimal and thousands setting. These are for how numbers are displayed, like using the version command to show the version of DOS or the mem command to check memory usage. This can stay on auto. Next, we have the beep setting. From here, we can change the length of beeps when holding down keys on the keyboard, for example. I will leave this set to two. Then we have the time setting. I prefer the 24 hour clock, so I will leave this alone for now. Now we have some miscellaneous options here. By default, names of files will be displayed in lowercase letters. If you prefer the traditional DOS style of uppercase letters, then mark the force uppercase option here. 
Default batch echo, if enabled, will echo all commands in a batch file unless you specify at echo off. Deselecting this option will have the echo off unless you specify echo on. Protect redirected output files when enabled prevents file output redirection from overwriting existing files. I would like this feature on. Anything to prevent accidental data loss is a plus in my book. Search on short file names changes the behavior of searching in 4DOS. Unchecked disables searching short file names and should be used when 4DOS is running under Windows 95, 98, or Millennium Edition, because 8.3 file names are treated the same as long file names under those versions of Windows. To remain consistent with the search behavior of command.com, this should be checked if you are running DOS. Support Unix path separators literally just allows you to enter forward and backslashes in the command line without them being treated as command switches. I'll not be using this feature at this time. Now let's move on to option set number two. The logging section allows you to toggle logging of commands, errors, history, and set the location of the log files. I'll leave these alone for now. Under the eval section, min and max change the number of decimal places that will be displayed when using the eval command. The eval command is used to evaluate an arithmetic expression. I will leave this alone for now. The help options are used to change the behavior of the help menu. For example, you can use the slash e switch to make the escape key go back to the help table of contents opposed to backing up through the recently viewed topics. The Rex path setting is used to define the program 4DOS should use to execute batch files. This is primarily used when running 4DOS with PCDOS. The installation path is exactly that, the directory path for where 4DOS was installed. This is used for launching things like the help system. Last but not least, we have our command setting. Copy prompt will prompt you before overwriting a file when using the copy or move commands. I approve of this. Let's enable it. Colors we looked at in a previous episode. We can define the colors of text for various things in the command prompt. For example, in the directory listing, executable files will be displayed in magenta. The list settings are used for the list command. We can change the background and foreground colors for the text and status bar. We can also select a printer for the list command to print to. Finally, we have the select options. We can change the background and foreground color for the text and status bars when using the select command. That concludes our tour of the 4DOS option.